Hi, let's talk about modular gameplay, gameplay features, and modular gameplay actors and what they can do for you. Think of a game feature as a mod that can access and modify anything in the base game and add content such as maps, vehicles, and abilities. Fortnite, Valley of the Ancient, Lyra, and many other projects use game features extensively. In Lyra, the ability to dash, aiming downside, the reticle and even the scoreboard are part of the shooter core game feature. But there are so many other applications. The game features and modular gameplay plugins help developers to create standalone features for their projects. They help to avoid dependencies, to keep the code base clean and to improve the maintainability. They also facilitate the shipping of seasonal content, DLCs and one-time events and they can be enabled and disabled at runtime. Your game might include plugins that are part of the engine, plugins that are part of your project, and game features. Your core game might directly depend on plugins such as a game playability system, but it should never depend on your game features. The game features, on the other hand, can access everything your base game and modify it. That's why it's called a mod. They should be self-contained, but they can build upon other game features and depend on other plugins when explicitly declared. In this tutorial, we are going to use the modular gameplay and game features plugin to create our own game feature. By the way, all game features are always located under the plugins game features subfolder. And then we are going to copy paste modular gameplay actors to our own plugin as you can find it in, for example, Lyra. Okay, let's launch the engine. And here we go to games the third-person C++ template without starter content, and the project name is My Modular Game. In the Unreal Editor, we go to Edit, Plugins, and here we search for Modular, and then we select Modular Gameplay, and also the Game Feature Plugin. And we restart the engine. Anri is asking us to add an entry for the game feature data type to the primary asset types to scan to the asset manager. Let's do this so that our game feature is going to be recognized when opening this project. If you go now to the project settings and to the asset manager, you can see that there are three primary asset types to scan. By default, it's only the map and the primary asset label, and now it's also the game feature. Now, under plugins, we can add a game feature with C++. This is always going to be placed under the Plugins, Game Features folder, and we name it My Game Feature. And the author, that's me, and the description is not relevant for now. After we created the plugin, the associated game feature data file is opened. You can see that there are two kinds of states. The initial state is the state of the game feature when initially loaded in editor runtime and there's a current state which can be changed at any time. Before changing this file, it is recommended to change the current state to registered. By clicking on Edit Plugin, we can change the plugin properties. Here you can see that the game feature's initial state is set to active. You can also change the descriptive data, the icon, and most importantly, you can specify explicit dependencies to other plugins or game features. We can change the current state of the plugin to one of those four states exposed to the editor. Installed means that the plugin is in local storage on the hard drive, but not registered with the engine. Registered means that the assets in the plugin are known, but have not yet been loaded into memory. Loaded means that the plugin is loaded into memory, but not registered with the game systems. Active means that the plugin is fully loaded and active. That means that it's affecting the game. Here we can specify a path for gameplay tags specific to our game feature. Then there are game feature actions and the asset manager where we can define primary asset types to scan similar to what we have in our project settings, but specific to the game feature. For example, we could add a map as a primary asset type without the need for a reference from the core game. The power of game features lies in its actions that are taken when the game feature is activated. You can create your own or use the built-in actions, of which the Add Components action is probably the most widely used. As the name suggests, this action adds components to actors by type. None to none means that there is neither a component nor an actor class specified. 
client and server component means whether the asset bundle should always be loaded on a client or dedicated server respectively. The usual way to add a actor component to your actor is to browse to your source file or your blueprint file and to add a component. For example, a Niagara component. However, we won't do this here, we will use the game feature actions instead. Back in our game feature data, under add components, we choose our actor class, the third person character. The component does not exist yet. So let's create it in our game feature. If you don't see this folder, you need to go to the settings and click on show plugin content. Let's create our Niagara component here. I name it BP My Niagara Component. Let's open it, delete this, and then I'll print hello from my Niagara component. Now in the class default, I'm going to select the Niagara system. I can't find it here. But I'm probably able to find it in the engine content. Yeah, select this. Give it an offset along the Z axis. Then compile and save. Now let's go to the game feature. And here I can add the component to our character. I change the state to active and save. One thing is left to do in our third person character blueprint. I delete this and then I get the game framework component manager subsystem. And we add the character as a receiver for components in the begin play function. Let's compile and save it. And now when we press play in editor, you can see our new component is added to our character. And the beauty of it is that our core game doesn't know anything about it. Let me briefly show you how you can add your own actions to your game feature. Under Tools, New C++ Class, All Classes, I'm going to create a game feature action. As you can see, they follow this naming convention, and so we do. Add Ability is a common example for an action that is probably used by more than a single game feature and therefore part of the core game runtime. I go back to our game feature, add a new element here, and select our new game feature action add abilities. I won't dive into the details of the actions implementation here for now, but I'm going to give you a closer look at this topic later in this video. Let's go back to our third person blueprint, get rid of this logic and see how we can make actors receive components in a more elegant way by using modular gameplay actors. Under plugins, if you search for modular gameplay actors, you won't find anything. We have to create the plugin ourselves. We could do this through the Unreal Editor here. However, the easiest way would be to look which project already implements the modular gameplay actors. This is the case for Lyra, so let's get the Lyra code. In the Epic Games launcher under samples or the marketplace, you can find the Lyra starter game. If you don't want to download the whole project, you can also find the plugin under Epic Games GitHub. You'll need a GitHub account and additionally access to the Unreal Engine source code, which you will find here. I include a link in the description. Here at the Epic Games account on GitHub, scroll down to the Unreal Engine section and under samples, you'll find the Lyra game. Inside the plugins folder, you'll see modular gameplay actors and here you can copy all the files over to your project. I already have the Lyra starter game on my computer. I just copy the folder from there into my project's plugins folder. Now in the IDE, in my case writer, after the project has been synchronized, you can see the plugin in your solution. If it doesn't show up right away, you can try reloading the project. Once it's loaded, you can browse through the files. In the build CS file, you can see that the plugin depends on the modular gameplay engine plugin. When you open the modular character class, for example, you will notice that there's a function call similar to how we've done it previously in the characters blueprint. 
If you open the Game Framework Component Manager header file and you look for the path, you see it's part of the engine's built-in modular gameplay plugin. And you can find the documentation for this plugin also here online. Back in the code, you'll find this function call in all the other modular actor classes, except for the modular game mode, which just overrides the actor references with their respective modular versions. In the header file, you can see that the modular actors are derived from their respective actor base class. To activate the plugin, I go to the U project file and I add the following lines. In the project's buildcs file, I add this as a public dependency module name. Now, instead of deriving from the character, we'll inherit from the modular character class. Don't forget to include the necessary header file. This class is essentially the same as a normal character which overrides functions of the actor interface. Let's close everything and build the solution. I open the project again in Unreal Engine. I go to the plugins section, search for modular gameplay actors, and we can see it's activated. The BP third person character event graph is empty. And if we press play again, you can see that everything works as expected. To summarize, we have the modular gameplay actors derived from their non-modular versions. They all implement the following logic, which enables them to get components added through the Game Framework Component Manager. We can either derive from the modular classes or add this respective call in the actor's blueprint. The modular game mode does not implement this logic, but overrides its actor references with their modular versions. Now let's see what is happening behind the scenes. If you want to write your own mod or game feature, you need to know which class to inherit from, which functions to override, and which delegates to subscribe to. Like every C++ executable, Unreal starts with a main function that initializes the engine. In the uEngine init function, all engine objects are loaded and the asset manager is created. The asset manager handles loading, unloading and maintaining references to game-specific assets. When it's created, it broadcasts a corresponding delegate. Here's where the game feature plugin first comes into play. The game feature subsystem shares the lifetime of the engine and manages the game features. You can subclass the game feature policies and select the project specific rules for your game feature plugins in your project settings. At this point, a state machine is set up to manage the transition of a game feature plugin from just a URL into a fully loaded active plugin, including registering its contents with other game systems. This state machine implements the state pattern, a behavioral software design pattern, where each state is its own class. The registering state is a transition between the installed and registered state. In this state, the assets are discovered but not yet loaded. The wait until complete function blocks until top priority assets are loaded. It also calls the postload function through the game feature data, which is a primary data asset. A primary data asset has asset bundle support, which allows it to be manually loaded through the asset manager. The update asset bundle data function in the game feature data iterates through all the game feature actions and allows them to add additional asset bundle data. In the add components action, the path to BP My Niagara component is added with its bundle names client and server to always load on clients and dedicated servers respectively. Back in the state machine, the loading state is the transition between registered and loaded. In this state, the code is loaded into memory and the onGameFeatureLoading function is called. This function processes all the game feature actions, but the addComponent action doesn't do anything at this state. Once the game feature is loaded, it moves to the activating state, where the plugin code and content are registered with the game systems. The subsystems on game feature activating function is called. Again, it iterates over all actions, but this time the function is actually overwritten by the add component action. Here, the add to world function is called. 
In this function, the Game Framework Component Manager is retrieved and requests the components to be added to any actors of the specified classes as they spawn. The Game Framework Component Manager from the Modular Gameplay plugin is another type of subsystem that shares the lifetime of the game instance, whereas the Game Feature subsystem shares the lifetime of the engine. It is common that plugins are derived from subsystems as they provide easy-to-use extension points without the need to override complex engine classes. Let us take a final look at the game feature data. If you change the current state from left to right to left, the transitional states like loading and activating as seen before are processed in the game feature subsystem. Those functions follow the same pattern. First, they call the function callback observers passing the game feature data and the appropriate eObserver callback enum. Second, the corresponding function is called for each action if it implements this function. If you take a look into the callback observers function, you will see a switch statement which reacts to the enum as mentioned before and calls the appropriate function which is declared in the iGameFeature state change observer interface. You can implement this interface with all its functions in your own game feature to handle all those transitional states. This and the game feature policies give you all the control you need for publishing mods, DLCs, seasonal content and one-time events. If you want to know applications for game features, I recommend looking into the Lyra starter game. If you enjoyed the video, I'd be happy about a like or a subscription. Thanks for watching. See you next time.